Epstein here and in today's video I'm gonna be telling you a story a story about an experience that I had with the 5-MeO DMT substance also known as the Bufo toad and what role that played in helping me understand the ego and so I'm gonna share with you the story I'm gonna take you on a journey with me and hopefully you can gain some knowledge and some wisdom throughout this journey so I guess I'll start with the 5-MeO-DMT compound and what that is and why I even had desire to take it in the first place. So 5-MeO-DMT is a chemical compound. It's different from just regular DMT. The 5-MeO-DMT is something that you only find on the back of this toad in the Sonora Desert. And this toad is called the Bufo Alivaris toad. And so really these, these toads just exist in the Sonoran Desert. Um, people take the toad, they don't harm the toad, they squeeze the back and this venom comes out. And if us as humans, we smoke this venom, we have an experience of God, we have an experience of loss of ego, a loss of self, and really we gain the ability to almost start over. We get to hit the reset button on what we thought this reality was and we get to start to create it over again. And that's really what I did. And the only reason I'm making this video today is because my experience with the Bufo Toad, and you can see how, how powerful that experience was, I got it tattooed on me, was a catalyst for the greatest transformation of my life. For me really gaining control over the way I felt, over the way I behaved, and what I was creating for the first time in my life. And so I did, I had my experience with the toad June 6, 2019. Um, it's about 11 months ago, more or less, from the time of making this video. And what got me interested in having the experience with the Bufo toad was just hearing a little bit from other people, some stories. I heard Mike Tyson talk about his experience with the Bufo toad and what a profound experience it was for him and how it brought him so much peace and, and greater wisdom in his life. And I'd also just heard about it uh, through the grapevine for a while. And, and people say that, especially with psychedelics, things like ayahuasca, um, the Bufo Alivaris toad, high doses of mushrooms, uh, you don't just go do these things. These, there's a spirit with these plants, these animals, and they call to you. So I don't think anyone should do these things unless you're feeling called to them. I had a feeling deep down in my soul that I was meant to go have this experience. And so, I did. I, I happened to just meet someone who knew about where I could do the toad, uh, had the experience of the toad, smoked the toad. And so I took them up on it and I just showed up about two and a half hours away from where I currently live here in Los Angeles. Um, and I went and had this experience with the Bufo toad. And the most profound part of this experience was what it did to my ego and my understanding of what the ego was. So let me bring you right back to the moment where I had my experience. And so we're all sitting there, it's a, you know, probably a dozen people in ceremony, and I'm watching these people go before me. I'm watching the first person smoke the bufo, and they lay back and they have an experience of God. They're very peaceful. It's a beautiful experience. I see the next person go and I see them have a very similar experience. I see the next person go, very similar experience. They lay back, peace. Then it's my turn. And with these kind of experiences, you can't, do, you can't help but create an expectation of what's gonna happen. And I was trying just to be present with it. Of course, I was a little bit nervous. I smoked that toad. <laughs> it's almost like, um, yeah, it's, it's just like you're, you're smoking this, um, venom that has been turned into a powder and so you smoke that and as I did I leaned back and everything that I ever knew about myself about the reality that we live in disappeared and I became nothing and I went to a place where I knew that I still existed not the eye of the ego but the eye of the soul of I had some essence that was a knowing that I was still there but at the same time I was connected to everything all at the same time, the, the entire universe, I felt myself with it, being a part of it, and completely losing any idea that I was a person, that I was Brandon, that I had a family, that I had work that I do, that I had any reality that I had created in this physical universe that we live in and we operate every day. And when I had this experience 
um, that is what's called the ego death. And this was my first true, powerful, all the way through ego death of my life. And I have done high amounts of um, mushrooms. I've done a couple ceremonies of ayahuasca where I took very high doses, but it wasn't, the bufo toad is on such a higher level than anything I've ever experienced that it was the first thing that was able to break me through and completely dissolve my ego. And so there was no more me. I was with everything. I was with God. And when I say God, I, I consider God to be everything, the essence of everything. So the oneness, that's what I consider God to be. So I went into that oneness where I became whole with everything. There was no difference. I, yes, there was a unique energy signature that was still me somehow, but everything else still, I was a part of it. And I could feel that in a visceral level. And uh, when you go to this place, words no longer really serve the, any purpose there because language is very limited in regards to the experience that our, our conscious, our soul can have in a different space. And so I can't really describe for you fully what happened when I went to this other place. Um, what happened, the, the end part of it, as I was coming out of it, I was stuck in what many people call the veil. And this was one of the most difficult, no, probably the most difficult, spiritually painful experiences of my life, um, where I felt myself in this place where all I saw was this dark black and red energy. And uh, I felt the, the presence of spirits. I felt like, okay, I never believed, I never believed in God before this experience, you know, um, this way, never experienced God, never believed in uh, spirits really because I never experienced them. But here in this space, I could feel the presence of spirits by past relatives that have gone over. And I was moving through dimensions and I was between the veil with their presence there. And there was an extreme energetic purge I was going through while I was having this experience where my energy was emanating, shooting down through my spinal cord to my coccyx, and it was shaking my hips uncontrollably. My shoulders were starting to shake, uh, my legs, my body was purging all this energy from my, my need to have control, and it was taking all the control away from me, right? The worst fear that anyone could ever have, right, is losing all control and becoming nothing and dying. And that was my experience. I died during this experience of the Bufo Toad, and it was the hardest thing I've ever been through. And I would like to say that right afterwards, I snapped out of it and I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm enlightened now. And the funny thing is my ego thought that after that experience, because it was so pain, spiritually painful and difficult for me, that I would be enlightened. Um, and I was so certain of it is that as I was coming out of it the first time, um, my shaman had me do it a second time because she knew there was that eagle was holding on still saying, Oh, am I going to be enlightened? Am I going to be some, uh, leveled up figure? And so the toad had to humble me again. And so I smoked it again. I fell back into it and I disappeared into nothingness. I had another similar experience purging all this energy inside of me that was, probably many, many generations of energetic purging that needed to happen. Because as far as I know, no one in my family has ever done anything like this. Who knows how many generations we go back, but as far as like my media family and the couple generations before that, no one's ever done um, anything in this spiritual world, in this um, transference from the ego to the recognition of the soul. And honestly, the way I'm talking right now back, you know, before this experience, I would have said, yo, you, dude, you sound like this weird hippie. Like, what are you even saying? This doesn't even make sense. Like, you're just, you're just saying words. But this is my experience. So now I have to share it authentically for what it was. Um, I had experience of being nothing. I had experience of communion with God, not the guy with the white beard, but God as in the real God, which is everything, everything that we know in the universe, everything that ever was, is, or will be, um, the, the collective energy, the oneness, the one that connects all of us. And so this experience was extremely spiritually painful for me. And really no one has gone and had this experience after I told it to them. No one in my immediate circle 
um, who I've told about this wants to do it because I've told them how, how intense it was. And so before I tell you what happened after this experience, I'll say that you need to be in a very, you need to be cared for if you're going to be having this experience. You need to make sure I did this all by myself. I went by myself, but it's because I've done 11 years of meditation, deep work on myself before this leading up. So I had the, I built the energetic body to handle this experience and do it on my own. Uh, most people I would say should definitely create a very powerful circle for them to lean on after an experience like this, if they're even thinking about doing it. And if they're not, if you're not all there right now, if you feel like, Hey, I could be, Actually, I don't want to give advice. I'm going to, tell, I'm going to continue to tell my experience because I think it's not fair to give advice um, when it comes to something like this. So after I came out of the second time of smoking the Bufo toe, becoming nothing, understanding that uh, my ego was actually so enormous that I thought I was going to become enlightened and getting humbled so hard. Coming out of that, it was hard to make sense of this physical 3D reality that we live in here. And it was really like Neo taking the red pill and saying, okay, People talk about nature being like this cactus, right? This is nature, but actually this plastic uh, container holding is nature too, because it's all one, it's all the same. And I had that full recognition of everything in a way is living and everything is just energy. It's all the same. It's all energy. And so that's this profound per perspective, but also this uh, deep loss of the world that I used to know and the ego world I used to operate in where I get worked up maybe over things that really didn't matter. So after that experience, um, every night for a couple weeks, uh, I had the equivalent of probably what a lot of people have with PTSD. I would go back into this spirit realm at night and I would have these profound experiences with people who've passed away in my life, um, other people that I need to do deep healing with. Um, from emotional wounds that I had. It was basically an experience of getting to see all the things I needed to heal. And so I started doing that work and I was very, very blessed to have a friend of mine who works in this world. His name is Sensei Clay. Some of you have heard me talk about him before. And he was able to mentor me in this process called, um, cleaning, called cleaning up your inner planet, where I got to basically start over again and ask myself, you know, what do I believe? What do I believe to be true? And how are these beliefs constructing the reality that I experience? How is it what I hear, smell, taste, uh, see and touch? How is that creating my experience of the way I feel? And how does that lead, lead to what I create? And how does that lead to the outcomes I'm actually seeing in my life? The people who show up, the results I'm able to create. Um, so I went through this process of a few months of really deep work. Um, I'm fortunate to have some businesses online um, that were able to continue to keep functioning pretty well um, while I was able to do a lot of this deep work. I didn't stop working completely, but this was kind of my full-time job for a few months where I committed to rebuilding my, my sense of, of self and what I believed because I realized that um, my whole life I was living out these beliefs that I never even chose. They were beliefs that stem from early childhood experiences, the community, the family I had. Because if you don't choose your beliefs, you're just getting the ones that you started with from, from day one, you know, from whatever your circle was during those formative years between zero and seven years old, you're just getting programmed. So the toad opened the door for me to reprogram myself because it put me in such a vulnerable position where I was a blank slate. I had such a clear connection to spirit and a, such a aversion to just to my ego and to being wrapped up in the ego that I really wanted to choose over again. And I wanted to choose the new ego that I was stepping into. And so the reason why the Bufo Toad is so powerful is because when you go through this ego death, it gives you an opportunity to choose what your ego experience will be going forward. Because once you know the big game, that when we die, it doesn't end here, that our spirit, our essence goes on, then we know that, okay, so I am here on earth to have an ego experience because how could I have anything else? The ego is the lens in which we get to consume life, experience life. And without the ego, we just be a soul. So 
that's why I believe that the monks that go sit on top of mountains and they just meditate and pray their whole life, people who do that, I think personally, I think it's a little bit silly because if you're trying to get to that deep communion uh, with God, that's going to happen when you die. So while you're here, we have an ego experience. So use the ego experience, have the ego experience. And you know, I'm a young guy. When I did this, I was 29 years old. I recently turned 30 years old. So it's very possible as I get older, I may want to get more back in communion with the spirit. I'm sure I will. But here, when you're in the prime of your life, when you're trying to create whatever your life is going to be, your life experience, you're in the, the prime of your life, it is an ego experience. And the ego gets a bad rap as if it's something that you don't, you shouldn't be so egotistical. No, we should all be very egotistical, but we should be smart about it. We should understand that we're choosing the ego in which we want to operate in. The key is to capitalize on all the positive aspects of the ego because the ego is there to keep you safe. It's able, it's there for you just to operate in as you go live your life. And if you want to achieve great things, you need a great big ego. You need to build up this sense of belief in yourself or your ego is so big that you believe you have the audacity to believe that you could be great at something, whether it's a sport, art, business, whatever it is. And so that was my recognition was, Oh great, so I'm living, I'm having a spiritual experience, or I'm having an ego experience wrapped up in the spiritual experience. So if I can align my ego and my goals with what I know spiritually to be within alignment with the oneness and what is gonna serve the greater good, then I can have a wonderful, abundant, beautiful ego experience that serves me and also serves my higher purpose. And so the work that I did, the, the bufo toe did not fix anything. The bufo toe gave me the most profound ego depth of my life and gave me very much a clean slate to work from where I could start to build my ego up again. And so through this experience and through working with my sensei clay, <clears throat> I was able to basically reprogram all my beliefs. I was able to reprogram my mind and that has led to me um, finding out really what my life's purpose is, which is sharing this inner planet work with the world because it was so profound for me. And I realized that so many people are confused about what the ego is and what, people are confused about what the ego is, they're labeling as bad and not understanding that the ego is the experience. This is the human experience. And if you try to get rid of it, you're not gonna be a human anymore. So we have to operate within the constructs that we've, we've been given with it, which is the ego as a human. And so we choose with intention how we want to operate within this ego. And so my choice was to ask myself, okay, well, what, what matters the most to me? And it was to be in alignment with the oneness, with the communion of everything that I experienced um, during that, that Bufo experience. And then um, that I experienced again a few months later when I went and did a very powerful, I had a very powerful experience with um, some mushrooms to bring myself back to that state to kind of really, um, I would say, the word I'm looking for is it cemented um, my new belief structure when I went back in that second time. And because I was still, although I had created my new reality and I was living and I was feeling good, I still had this sense of, but what is the bigger game? I want to see under the universe's skirt again. What else is going on here? And so not to make this too much of a tangent, but what I did was I took a very large mushroom dose and I laid down and I allowed myself to go back into the spirit world. And what I realized was once I'd been through there once, um, the, the toad opened the door and I could go back and forth. And I, you can do this stuff through meditation as well. I just haven't had the, the patience and the interest to, um, and the discipline, I guess, to do it through meditation. So I did it through mushrooms. I saw the oneness. I saw what I need to align my, my life with that was going to be best for myself and all the other beings on this planet. And I was kind of meditating and rocking on the oneness, the oneness. And then you can't see if I have a photo up here that says you're exactly where you need to be. As I'm meditating on this, I feel this huge energetic wave hit me from, hit me from behind. And that, you're exactly where you need to be, fell off on this right here, which is a symbol of the oneness. Um, 
so people talk about having profound experiences that are unexplainable. Um, that was mine. That was my experience of, of God, the greater intelligence talking to me. It was saying you're exactly where you need to be in the oneness. And so I chose to rebuild my life with that, with that knowledge, with that wisdom that I gained through that experience. And, and so it was very much a trajectory that I went on reconstructing and then understanding, all right, well, really what we need as a, as a world, as, a, as a, a global society is to understand that we all are connected and there is a oneness. And it's not just about this individual ego experience, but we need to see how that ego experience plays in to the greater whole and how we can do things that benefit ourselves, but also benefit others. And so that's become my life work is through working with professional athletes, entrepreneurs, artists, people who want to change the world and giving them the ability to control how they feel, how they behave and what they create in their life through this work that I learned myself. And so that's why I created the B mental fitness training app. That's literally what I'm taking people through the same transformation that I went on because I don't know about you, but I used to have experiences in my life where my emotions would kind of just be a little bit on a roller coaster, like not super, you know, up and down, but even though I meditate all the time and I thought I did a lot of personal development, I would have like a week where I just like feel off. And I'd be like, why do I feel off? And it was because I was unconsciously incompetent. I didn't even know the beliefs that were hurting me that were hidden below the surface. And so this process that I went through and now that I teach, it pulls things out from underneath the surface and says, hey, this is why you're suffering. Would you like to change this? And I got the opportunity to change myself and now I'm continuing to pay it forward and I'm helping other people change as well because my belief is that life should be joyful. This is, life should be joyful. The ego experience should be joyful and everything we do should be contributing to the oneness and that's my, my personal belief and you can do that in many, many different ways and the, the common theme between all the ways that we express ourselves is through understanding that we all have a unique gift to give. And so my unique gift to give is through teaching and educating and hopefully bringing a little bit of relatability and charisma to this stuff that maybe usually lives in a different container that, that doesn't get in, into the ears of people like yourself. And so I'm here to be a conduit and share this information and to have a great joyful experience myself and to give other people the ability to control the way they feel, behave, and what they create. Because isn't that what we all want? We want to be able to control how we feel so we can consistently feel good, right? Because the only reason you want to go buy a car, I know it's a dumb example, but you want to buy a car, fancy cars, because you think it's going to make you feel good when you're in the car, driving the car, have the self-esteem, the confidence of being in that car. But what if we could just feel good now? That's what this is all about, feeling good now and then seeing if you feel good now, well, what actions do you want to take? And then what results are going to come from those actions? Because when you feel good now to start, you're aligning with the oneness. You're coming from a place of being more than enough instead of needing to go get things to be enough. No, you already are enough. And that's what this is all about. So I've been talking a while now and I'm going to wrap this video up by saying that the Bufo Alvarez is an incredible, incredible um, gift that I was, that I got to experience. I highly recommend it for people who are looking for deep spiritual growth and believe that they're ready for it. If you're not ready for it, that's why I also created the Be Mental Fitness Training app is so I could take people through the same process I did and show them how to gain greater control of their focus and their choices in the world. All right. Um, and uh, hopefully you understand now at a deeper level that the ego is not bad. The ego is not the enemy. The ego is definitely not the enemy. If anyone believes it's the enemy, then they are someone who is not understanding. They haven't had the visceral experience of what I'm talking about. Because once you do, you understand. And you can go listen to a lot of people who've gone through experiences with the Bufo Toad from Tony Robbins to Peter Diamantis to Mike Tyson. And all these guys will tell you the same shared experience to understand that the ego is not something that we need to punish. It's something that we need to utilize to align with the oneness, to have the best possible experience for ourselves and for other people. But ultimately we are humans. We can't shed our human flesh yet. This is what we're here to have. We're here to be humans, to have human experiences, to give our gifts. So 
My hope is that this struck a nerve in you and you understand that you are unique, you have a gift to give, and you are worthy of giving that gift. So thank you for tuning in today. Again, I'm Brandon Epstein. Appreciate you so much for watching this video. Please share it if it's been interesting or helpful in some way to you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next video.